You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas of the Lotri Foundation. In this podcast, Sheikh Zahir explains the aphorisms from Ibn Atta al-Laz Fim's Book of Wisdoms, Al-Hikam al-Ata'iyya, a classical manual of spiritual development. Visit secretshub.org for online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma alimna ma yinfa'na wa nfa'na bima alimtana wa zidna ilman bi fadlika wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam <coughs> we're inshallah <coughs> we're going to start back the hikam of Ibn Ta'ila the hikam is one of the most uh, well known and famous texts <coughs> written in the 12th century by a scholar, one of the great scholars Shaykh Ibn Ta'ila Iskandari <coughs> who was from the north of Cairo in Egypt, uh, in Alexandria and he was a scholar of many of the Islamic disciplines <coughs> and, <coughs> and a scholar of <coughs> to note he was a scholar of fiqh and of Quran and he taught the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explaining it but he also was a, uh, a master in the science of Ihsan a science that the Prophet ﷺ talked about in the hadith of Jibreel السلام, when he came in the form of a man and he asked the Prophet السلام, questions um, three in particular what is Islam, what is Iman and what is Ihsan what is uh, spiritual excellence <coughs> so the Prophet ﷺ responded that ihsan and ta'budu Allah ka'annaka tarahu wa in lam yakun wa in lam takun tarahu in lam yakun tarahu fa huwa yara it is to worship Allah as though you see him and know that if you do not see him and then if you do not see him know that he sees you this is how the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam explained the concept of the concept of ihsan the concept of spiritual excellence uh, Ihsan is translated as such. So it's Shaykh Ibn Ta'illah, the author here of the Hikam, who are, which are wisdoms, they're words, statements, um, that conveys uh, sometimes uh, they're taken from hadith, and sometimes they're taken from ayat of Quran, sometimes they're taken from statements of the companions and so on. Um, uh, in order to, for what reason? In order for the servant to look at himself or herself and to make a determination of what they want to change and to change, to determine in themselves a change for the better and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to keep striving to get even closer and to increase one's love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this uh, the the auth the the book that he authored the hikam is as such so we've reached <coughs> number 49 <coughs> as far as i recollected so he says la ya'dhumu dhambu indaka adhamatan tasadduka an husna dhan billahi ta'ala fa inna arafa rabbahu Istazqara, istazqara fi jambil qaramahi dhambahu. So he says, uh, the author, Shaykh Ibn Ta'illah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him and with you. He says, do not let your sins, do not let, do not let any sin uh, be considered large in your eyes. Do not let any sins be considered so large in your eyes that it stops you from hoping for the best from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not let any sin become so large in your eyes 
that it stops you from hoping for the best of from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high for whoever knows his Lord whoever knows his Lord's deems his sins small deems his sins paltry in the face of his karam in the face of his generosity whoever knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deem his sin paltry or small in the face of the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his Lord and so the author Ibn Ta'ala is talking about what he's talking about a concept of some attributes that the servant uh, will have and the servant has that is khawf and muraja that fear and hope and the servant is always in between these two attributes the servant is either fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has khawf or he, is, he has raja he is hopeful and hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so this is from the attributes of the believer this is the attributes of the believer and so in concerning these attributes of the believers then the way that uh, the person looks at a sin is in two ways two ways that the servant can look at the sin and Shaykh ibn Ta'illah is looking at the sin in one particular uh, through this hikmah he's looking at it from one particular stance now the first way to look at a sin or what happens when one sins is that one can can, can consider that the sin that one commits so great that it leads one to a uh, complete turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek repentance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one is so remorseful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over that sin because it, it it's so great in in one's eyes the sin that 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 one has committed is deemed so great or so large in one's eyes that it leads to a uh, it leads to a uh, a remorsefulness that leads to a tawba that leads to a great tawba and a significant tawba repentance and a turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it also leads to a promise not to do it again because the servant is so shattered that uh, over the fact that he has uh, broken a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he has uh, committed this offense against the generousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and against the, uh, the overwhelming uh, risk that has come to one from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it leads that the sin is considered so great even though it may be a, a, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be small but the servant considers it big because of the fact that he, he sees it or she sees it as being uh, a great disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the, from the very fact that uh, that the servant is hopeful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive and does forgive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all merciful and so this servant when he sees his sin as he sees his sin as being great, uh, great it leads him to tawbah and seeking of forgiveness and repentance the other servant however is a servant who is has he's khawf there's khawf he has fear of Allah and, he's, and he has hope the other servant is the servant that Ibn Ta'ila Shaykh Ibn Ta'ila is talking about and that's the servant who sees his his sin so great that it leads him not to seek forgiveness but he sees it so great that it leads him to uh, to despair it leads him to despair and it leads him to give up it leads the servant to give up it leads him to despair and losing of hope he loses hope 
he loses hope of what? Of forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he and this servant, what is fearful of him, is that he thinks bad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In what way would the servant think bad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over sinning? He thinks bad of Allah because he does not comprehend the uh, the greatness of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't comprehend that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al karim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous. He doesn't comprehend that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ar-Rahman, Al-Ghafir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Rahim, the most compassionate. And so this servant, because he does not consider, think, or assume of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these attributes are are definitely overwhelming and that the servant can uh, can be uh, can be forgiven Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his generosity can forgive and have mercy and be compassionate towards the servant that this servant he sees a sin so large that it stops him from even seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he sees himself as being a sinner and he loses hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will be forgiven, that he will be forgiven. And so Ibn Atha'illah, this is what he, uh, this is what he is warning the traveler to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about. He says, do not consider or no, let no sin loom so large in the eyes. Do not let any sin seem so big in the eyes that it stops you from hoping for the best of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That it stops you from looking, from hoping for the best of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For whoever knows his Lord deems his own sin paltry or small in the face of what? In the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity. In the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity. And this is what the companions, some of the companions worried about when they entered the faith. They entered the faith and they were afraid of that their sins that they had committed, that the sins that they committed in the past, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be uh, the one who forgave or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not forgive them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a verse down to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to address these servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul, Ya ibadi alladhina asrifu ala anfusihim la taqmatu min rahmatillah inna Allah yaqfiru dhunuba jami'a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, had sent uh, a verse to the Prophet to tell them, and he says, Qul, Ya ibad al asrafu ala anfusihim, O oh, my servants who have uh, been prodigal against their own souls, or who have uh, sinned, uh, and who have uh, taken their soul, or taken themselves to uh, to uh, They've broken it or they've taken it uh, into an area against themselves that they have uh, they have oppressed themselves or they have wronged themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, O oh my servants who have uh, been held or prodigal against themselves, la taqnatu min rahmatullah, do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah yaqfiru dhunuba jami'a. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgives all of the sins, every single one of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive if the servant wants his Lord to have or he wants his Lord to forgive him. Then the servant just has to ask. And the servant has to repent and the servant has to come to Allah, to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sinning is part of being 
what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. Sitting, sitting is part of the nature of man. It's part of the nature of man. The Prophet والسلام, he says, uh, call Prophet والسلام, by him in whose hand is my soul. Hmm? The Prophet والسلام, he said, by him in whose hand is my in my soul. Hmm? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are not going to sin, if you are not going to sin, then Allah would have taken you away. If you are not going to sin on a whole, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have taken you away and He would have replaced you with those who would sin. He would replace you with those who would sin and who would do something else, He said to Prophet Muhammad, and who would forgive, who would seek the forgiveness of Allah so that he may forgive them. He would have taken you away. If Allah, Allah the Prophet, I sat to salam, he said, if you were not going to sin, if you were not going to sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have taken you away and replaced you with those who would sin so that they may seek forgiveness and so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive them. Why in the hadith is like this? Because the manifestation of the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness and the manifestation of the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to be expressed. He wants His attributes to be expressed. He wants His attribute of forgiveness to be expressed. And He wants His attributes of generosity to be expressed. And he wants his attribute of, of mercy to be expressed. And he wants his attribute of forgiveness to be expressed. And of compassion to be expressed. And so how is it expressed? How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attribute of being the most forgiving, of being the most compassionate, of being the most merciful, of being the most generous? How is it expressed? It is expressed to the servants. <clears throat> It is expressed through the servant in them being forgiven and given success after they have transgressed the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how it's given. That's how it's expressed. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because if, it's, if, his, if his attributes, these attributes are expressed in, in this world and in the next world, if these attributes are expressed, especially in this world, then there's more that the servant will seek from their Lord. And there's more closeness that the servant will come to their Lord. And there's more effort that the servant will, will put forth for their Lord, for their own benefit, for their own benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see the expression of thankfulness on the servant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see he wants to see their expression and their expressing of their thankfulness. And so by way of expressing his attribute is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanting for the servant to put more effort and to seek even more closeness to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the servant to seek even more closeness to him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the servant to always be in the uh, in between khawf which leads them away from sin khawf and having khawf having fear leads one away from transgressing the limits but if one does transgress the limits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants one to express the attribute of raja of hopefulness and not despair but hopefulness in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most uh, compassionate and the most merciful and if the servant then uh, is in between these two attributes if the servant has these two attributes within him khawf and raja then the servant is able to correct himself or herself when a sin occurs able to correct it and they correct it through 
repentance, tawbah, and they're corrected through the seeking of forgiveness. And they, and they correct it through their effort that they keep on applying in their worship and in their obedience. This is what the this is how the servant can correct it. Because a servant who sees a sin so large but is not hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a servant who may keep sinning and a servant who will stop practicing because he will not see and he because he's not hopeful or she's not hopeful in the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when you see and you come across even within your within yourself, or when you see people who has transgressed, or you come across people who may transgress the limits even in front of you, do not have them be in despair. You have to judge accordingly and kinder words, the nicer words are better than harsher words. Kinder words is better than harsher words, especially in the time that we live. And the encouragement to do good instead of the, instead of the uh, bringing the, uh, bringing the, uh, the hellfire and talking about the hellfire to them. Talk about hope to them. This is in our day. We have to talk about hope to people so that they may correct themselves. Because if you fill someone with hope, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over the sins that they committed, then that hope can lead them to an opening of tawbah and lead them to an opening of having remorse over their sin. And that remorse can lead them to stopping themselves from sinning. That remorse can lead them to stop themselves from sinning. And so this is the hope that that you want to leave people with and yourself with. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous uh, and the expression of his attributes mm, is what is sought, uh, is what we need uh, to, uh, uh, to establish in our lives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great in forgiveness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the door of his mercy to his servants and if the servant is the one who sees this and sees the manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala generosity and compassion and mercy then the servant continues to walk and to travel and to run towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by seeking his closeness may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and forgive us, have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our elders, our parents, give them good health and long life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our footing firm in his deen, protect our children, keep them on a straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide for them, grant them success in this world and in the next world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal them and cure them. Those who have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them his mercy, his makfirah and his shade. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge and practice of the deen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in the establishment of the deen within our lives and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and forgive us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our homes from amongst the homes of the believers and make our last words our best words subhanahu wa ta'ala and astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayk wa sallallahu wa ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Thank you for listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas. Help Seekers Hub spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.